Well, we've had a few days to digest a Flight 10 of Starship. And SpaceX has shared a few photos and videos of the finale that I especially want to talk about with the ship. Apparently, some people still see this flight as a failure because they see the video of the Ship 37 landing in the Indian Ocean, tipping over, and then exploding. We also see this distinct orange color on Ship 37 as it ended its journey. And I want to talk about more information that we have from SpaceX. And I wanted to debunk some of these speculation that was going around. So surprisingly enough, the heat tiles mostly stayed in place. It was kind of hard to tell originally, and you see this orange copperish coloring on the ship. Some people thought that the tiles came off in a zipper effect. That's actually not the case, and that's really good news. Remember, as part of this test to have a fully reusable heat shield that is easy to refurbish, unlike Space Shuttle, SpaceX also had some experimental tiles, some metallic tiles, and less tiles to purposely stress the ship as much as they could. Also remember that at some point, SpaceX wants to catch the ship as well as the booster, and Elon hinted that that could happen likely by flight 13 or 14, and so maybe by early next year. So remember, we only have one more V2 ship left to launch. This will be during flight 11, and according to Elon Musk, V3 of the ship is already going through production. Elon says that V3 can get to Mars and might, but it's more likely that it'll be V4 making that trip to the Red Planet. And here's a photo from Joe Tegmeyer that shows you some of those different colored tiles that may have led to this orange streaking that we see on the ship. So this was the most surprising thing and the reason I'm making this video is that the heat shield tiles almost entirely stayed attached. So the latest upgrades are looking good according to Elon and it was really hard to tell from these initial photos <laughs> if there were any tiles left on the ship. Elon says that the red color is from some metallic test tiles that oxidized and the white is from insulation of areas where they deliberately removed tiles. Which I also wanted to point out, Elon also shared these photos showing that they had a uh, kiddie pool in the middle of the Indian Ocean that was able to capture the footage, but these photos are actually from Flight 6, so that is a little bit confusing. As my co-host Joe Tegmeyer points out, resolution is not quite high enough, but it appears that the catch pins and heat tile shroud worked well and survived re-entry, an important part of reuse by allowing a catch. And so remember, these catch pins are are important because we want those chopsticks to soon be catching the ship as well. And so all in all, Starship made it through re-entry with intentionally missing tiles. It also completed maneuvers to intentionally stress its flaps. It had visible damage to its aft skirt and flaps, and it still executed a flip and landing burn that placed it approximately three meters from its targeted splashdown point. Only three meters, which is pretty incredible. And so remember, the heat shield is Starship's biggest issue right now, and I'm so glad that they finally got to do some of these tests that SpaceX had been trying to do since Flight 7, all the way back in January before they had that sequence of losing ships due to RUDs. And what is what needs to improve in order to make it reusable? Like, what is, what's wrong with it right now? Uh, on the ship side, the, the toughest problem is the heat shield. So no, no, one, has actually, no one has ever developed a fully reusable orbital heat shield. Because you when you come in from orbital velocity, you come in like a flaming meteor, like you're just a r raging ball of fire. Um, and it's, it's hard to have a heat shield that doesn't partially melt or get destroyed in that process. Um, you know, that, that wasn't a problem we were able to solve with Falcon 9. That's why the upper stage uh, it burns up on reentry. Um, with the, with Starship, the the the, sh the ship portion, you got the sh the booster and you got the ship. Um, we got to solve the uh, making a fully reusable orbital heat shield, a problem that has never been solved before. Um, for a while there, I was like, mm, I'm not sure this this is solvable. At this point, I think it is solvable. Um, it requires detailed iteration on the heat shield tiles. Um, and, I mean, we've vertically integrated the manufacturing of the heat shield tiles because there, there was no supplier that could provide us with the materials that were needed. So the 
um, you, you need to make essentially this this very fine vermicelli of of glass and aluminum oxide uh, fibers. Um, aluminum oxide is basically sapphire, so it's like gla glass and sapphire, very fine fibers in exactly the right geometry, uh, with special coatings. Um, in order to have the th this heat shield tile be reusable, um, like not melt, um, and but not be so brittle that it gets damaged um, on ascent or descent. But making a fully reusable and rapidly reusable heat shield is something that has never been done before. Space Shuttle was close, but it would take months and months in between flights to refurbish the heat shield. If SpaceX is going to achieve reflying starships within 24 hours, they still have a ways to go. And so looking ahead, Flight 11 will be the last flight for the V2 ship, and then they'll move on to V3 for Flight 12. There's a possibility that on the next flight, Flight 11, SpaceX may actually try to deploy some real Starlink satellites because this deployment went pretty well of the Starlink simulators. I'm hoping that they'll have a catch for Flight 11 because it will also be the last time that they will use the Pad 1 or Pad A because they will need to tear that down and use the second pad to launch V3. So we're getting closer and closer to the day where not only the booster is recovered and caught in the chopstick arms, but so is the ship. Elon said this could happen on either flight 13, 14, or 15. It all depends on how the V3 flights go, and hopefully they don't have the same teething issues that V2 had. Starship is also coming to a Florida near you very soon. So if you live in the Florida area, I'm sure you're getting excited to see some Starship launches from your area. But this is a cool render and I wanted to share it with you. And it is very exciting to have more Starship action because everyone, including myself, loves it so much. So I just wanted to share these photos and images with you. Uh, I hope that you guys enjoyed the Flight 10 coverage. Thanks so much for supporting my channel and I'll see you in the next video. There it goes. Yes, come, on. come on. We see ignition. Come on. Looks like the engines are lit. And we have lift off. Let's we go. have lift off. Let's see. Okay. It is going okay. It's still silent. Yeah, Look at that thing. Oh, oh my goodness. We have all 33 engines lit. Oh, and okay. Woo.